following program is intended for a mature listening audience. Graphic and explicit language may be heard at times. The views expressed and the opinions given by the individual hosts and their guests do not necessarily express those of this station or sponsors. Listeners are advised that neither this station nor its owners and agents shall be held liable for the content of this program. Rebroadcast, redistributed or reused without express written permission by host or producer is not allowed. This is the Debbie Perkins Radio Show, and here's your host, Debbie Perkins. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Hollywood Red Carpet Radio Show. I'm Debbie Perkins, and I'm your host. I have an incredible guest this evening. You would recognize him as one of the most famous pirates from Pirates of the Caribbean in multiple uh, different movies. Uh, he also is incredible. Uh, he can transfer transfer his look with magic uh he looks he can go from looking like a twig a twisted psychopath to an alien he can go from an ent- entertainment executive to a pirate there's nobody unlike him there's nobody like him in the world welcome to the show leonsberg what's up debs i know right how are you i now i feel like so great after that intro you're awesome you know it I am. Um, you know what? I want to tell you, are. I'm very so great. Incredible. about awesome, but great? <laughs> Awesome's a good thing, especially nowadays. But you have got it's so many. Awesome shouldn't be something you think about yourself. Other people Please. can think you're awesome. It's bad when you think you're, when, when I think I'm awesome, that's usually pretty messed up. <laughs> I think you're awesome, and you've done Thank so you. many things. And for the audience that's listening, um, yeah. Yeah. You you've done hundreds of films and you've been in so yeah. many amazing uh, programs. Yeah, and I don't know. Some of them, I everybody would recognize. They will know who you are right. just by your voice. You've done voiceovers too, so there there's a lot of avenues to you, Lee. But I knew from not only interviewing you in the past, but reading up on your bio, you originally started when you were young. Yeah, but not as a, I mean, just like in school doing theater, being an entertainer, you know, I wasn't a professional till actually I got out of college. But I mean, I knew I wanted to be an actor and I got bit by the bug. And where I grew up in uh, Santa Monica, California, I mean, we had great, at the time, we had great arts education in the school from music to theater, drama to i mean a lot of programs you know that schools aren't offering anymore or right so i was very lucky that my time like that's that's my theme tonight i'm gonna go with that like i'm just real grateful you know a lot of times in in life right this is my theory check it out everything that you want from the universe from the god is available at all times you just got to have to match it with the right energy to get it. Like all the possibilities are out there, right? It's like playing go fish. You got to ask, hey, universe, you got a pair of threes? And if they got threes, they got to give it to you. So ask the right questions and then work hard and stay humble. And I, I got lucky. I did get lucky. But yeah, thanks. You know, like you're uh, very talented. So it wasn't just luck. It was skill. Well, yeah, I like to be in front of people. I'm very comfortable. I like the art of acting. I mean, I compare the, the it's funny, the, they call it the art of acting, but really it's like the craft of it. It's way more like construction and plumbing and uh, putting something together than one might realize. The audience is the key component that makes it art. When you can make somebody else laugh or make them cry, that's a beautiful, powerful thing. And uh, that's kind of like what I try and do. I try to get be get a reaction, make something that you'll remember happen when I'm acting through my acting. So you've been very thanks. successful at making people laugh. Yeah, um, yeah, totally around the world. Everybody knows you because of, of some 
funny programs that you've been in. And you picked some great ones. I, I don't know how you got to be able to be in so many incredible, not just movies, but TV shows. Yeah, I got, wouldn't yeah. realize. Right, yeah. They, had, they wouldn't realize that that was him in that show I saw. You know, and yeah. when they realize it's you, because you yeah. look different in everything you do. Yeah. I mean, to a certain extent now, like, right? I mean, when you get to use a lot of makeup, some of my more famous roles look a little different but because like pirates or the difference between like pirates and once upon a time or like seinfeld there's pretty three you know three kind of different looks to those characters for sure so and and then you got star trek and you had to play prosthetic um types of costuming yeah and i did a lot of you know, I wear how, makeup a lot right I yeah how hot those were to wear and oh they suck <laughs> Yeah, and to walk around in that and be in it for many hours. It's acting sucks. Uh, like <laughs> being a, you're gonna be you're gonna be freaking uncomfortable a lot of times in a costume, a pair of you know. You make the most of it. If you're masked, if you're if you're uh, you know like a, uh, under a lot of makeup, uh, even wearing a beard sometimes has to be maintained. Especially there's a difference between theater live performing for live audience and you know film acting and film tv that makeup is a lot more demanding like on stage you just got to make sure your stuff stays on your face and in place until you can get off stage and fix it but in film the camera really gets in there close so there any kind of lifting any kind of movement of a hair piece or uh any kind of edge that appears on a prosthetic uh has to be cleaned up and that means a lot of a lot of you know you're always being chased by your makeup artist it's a lot of stuff it's intense real intent that's funny um but yes because they have to keep you perfect because they don't know if maybe something will rub off and they have to put that line back that's if it's like cameras, something simple. the cameras are super high def yeah like imagine like even your camera that's on your iphone shoots like in 4k and, and, you know, so the, that that was back in the day on film, it's a lot lower resolution, a lot lower. The digital stuff is incredible. Wow. So that so that, that what they're chasing in the makeup world and honestly, a lot of that might go away. I hope it never does. But, you know, the, with the computers being so clever, um, I mean, this is a. It's an interesting time to be an actor with all this technology and uh yeah. It really but you've watched the change because you've been doing this for almost over two decades. So Actually, you're yeah, you've been in doing this a very long it, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This long is time. real business to you. There's no this is your this is your real world and your life. And it shows because of all the things you did. You know, you're in you're in one uh T V series, you're in it like fifty five episodes or more. Right, you know, right. they're really putting you out there in each and, and every single episode that you're in is just the um the background and, and the foreground. Everything's extravagant and to perfection. Yeah, that's what I've been mean, a lot of artists, you know, this is a team sport making these TV shows or movies, a lot of effort from a lot of different, you know, from every single department. So the actor is kind of lucky. He gets to be the kind of the jewel of everyone else's work on top or the star on the Christmas tree. Right. Because, but if you're, if your makeup isn't great, if like parking's messed up in your car, you're worried about your car. If, um, you know, these guys that build the sets or all the people that come in and light it or right. I mean, there's so many cool departments that work in, in this business and everyone coming together and working as one is usually what creates the best work. I agree with you because it, it, it does take a team to make something work. And the, a lot sure. of young people want to just become an actor. They think that's the only thing that there is out there. But you're telling us that there's so much more. But and you, you've been to one yeah, of you're actors. creating a magic a <laughs> piece of history. Yeah, yeah. I'm thinking it's not like if I could discourage it as a life goal, I would. 
And then if I can't talk you out of it, welcome to the club. You know, it's a lot of stubborn people that are actors. Um, we're always hearing no. We're always getting rejected. We're always, I mean, I need to get a part right now. It's been a while for me where I'm like wondering every time the phone doesn't ring for a while, you go, will I ever work again? Then you go, I suck. Then you go, yeah. you know, every human does you that. You don't, you're so crazy and amazing. I love <laughs> that you can go in such twisted directions because like, you yeah. have an, you have like multiple personalities um, to do what you do because you're incredible. You, go from being psychopathic, which I think you play such a great, crazy guy. Um, have you ever played a killer? You know what? I mean, not... I've played... Yeah, yeah I, I guess one or two times early in my career, I played a couple, like, uh, in a USA TV movie with Branscombe Richmond and uh, in Joey Travolta. I did... I played a crazy killer guy. Um, you did? Yeah, what... <laughs> Twice though, because I'm almost too crazy to be the killer. <laughs> oh, you're too crazy to be insane. <laughs> that what I kill a lot of people. Dungeons and Dragons. I'm a hero. I play Bagwell. Warriors of Virtue. Cool. Was that I mean, fun working on that set with Dungeons and Dragons? Because I remember the game. Yeah, that was a crazy movie. That, that was, was a crazy game. I never really fully understood it totally because it was interchanging. Oh, the game, yeah. Well, the game I actually played as a kid, right? Oh, yeah. When the movie came around, I, I just, it was so great to get a great part. It was one of my first good parts in a movie. It was thanks to those guys casting me, Corey Solomon. And uh, that was a great, I mean, that was that was a good one. I'd had some good roles before. The movie maybe was, people didn't like it or whatever, but it was so fun. I, it was in Prague, shooting in Czech Republic, all over the place in these castles. Oh, really? That's amazing. Oh, dude, so cool. Awesome. And, and getting to hang out and uh, really had a great time. Marlon Wayans and Justin Whalen and Zoe McClellan. I mean, a really interesting cast. A lot of cool people that have, you know, gone on to do a lot of stuff after that, right? So, um, Jeremy Irons. Uh, yeah, Richard O'Brien, who wrote Rocky Horror Picture Show, Tom Baker. Who really? Was, oh my word! Yeah, so I got to. Oh my the, word! Those people, yeah, that was. So, that's the thing about the business, right? Not every film is great. People don't want to talk about it or be proud of something that. Uh, it, it didn't, you know, it was. You know, people. If somebody goes, "Oh, this," or they, you know, it wasn't a huge hit. I guess it's the proper way to say something like that. Anyway, I love them all like my kids. I love them all like when I go root for my son playing sports and their team has a bad game and gets blown out and they, you know, it's like youth baseball. And I'm going to say like, I still, that was great. I'm going to look for the silver lining. And then when we get in the car, I'm not going to talk about it on the way home. Right. And those movies like that, um, you just got to love them. And in five years, you'll people will be like, "That was cool." Always yeah. works out. Warriors yeah. of Virtue, this one I did in China, is way cool movie. Way really, cool. way cool. That, and, what's it about? Tell, tell a little uh, bit. It's about a kid in, from the modern world who travels, like time travels, back into the world of uh, ancient worlds of Tao in China. Okay. And uh, to rescue, I mean, it was like a, it, but the cool part of, I mean, I can't even remember what the plot was about, really. I never <laughs> knew if I ever read the script, but you know, it was a fun movie to me. <laughs> in Beijing, in 1995 or six wow. or so, Angus McFadgen was in it, who you know from Braveheart, Marley Shelton. I mean, it was cool, you know, and legendary Peter Pow, the cinematographer, was our cinematographer. Uh, no the, uh, what? Yeah, so we had, I mean, it was crazy, a real Hong Kong stunt crew. And I was flying on uh, on wires <laughs> like man, and doing all kinds of crazy <laughs> stuff. So That's amazing. So, life experience, you know, Live, that, I lived in Beijing three, four, five months. Really? What was that like? wild was it really because i mean we we see it on television but it's we I mean, don't you know, that, that, yeah. this was the old version oh it was pretty modernizing when i was there 
Uh, but I got to see some of the old, like they call them hutongs, the old living kind of where all the houses were kind of connected. Uh, and, and, uh, they, they, you know, when the Olympics came, I think they cleaned it up and for the television and, but I got to see some of the old stuff. Of course, I went to a great wall and forbidden city, but wow, real eye opener. We, we were in this one area because we were bringing a lot of money in at the time. We sort of didn't get to go. We had free reign where all the embassies are and all the hotels. The pretty much the main area of town. And then, but it was, you know, it's a communist country. Uh, I, I loved it. I thought it was incredible. I went back again, actually, in 2007 just to check stuff out. Okay. So. Wow. Yeah. There was a huge difference. Was there a huge difference between the times? Huge, huge, huge. Between two thousand, between nineteen ninety six and those ten years, they wow. built crazy buildings like you saw in the Olympics, like the Bird's Nest one, where the two halves connect, and uh, the skyline was built. And uh, you know, I was in Shanghai that time. Shanghai is an amazing city with a great history. So anyway, that's part of this journey. Yeah of my life, Deb, that like is probably even greater than the, the movie career, the film career or whatever, because the, as the artist, as the actor, like I always want more. I always want another great movie or another crack. It's never enough for me, but what is enough is when I fill it with, uh, uh, thoughts of all the cool people and places I've been. So then I get right into my gratitude and I go, holy crap. It's like, I've really traveled the world. And, you know, my buddy in China was president of Cameroon. He was the president of this country. We watch a world come together. You know, he was my neighbor. I'm like, hey, stop the girl. Why are you stopping the girls from coming to my room? You know, kind of thing. The <laughs> He's the president. Because <laughs> he's probably saying, come over here. There's a better party in my backyard. He did invite me in. It, and yeah, his bodyguard was <laughs> Door. Oh my God. That's the thing owned by the army and a lot of great stories. Cameras in the room and uh, China was. You ever thought about writing a book about your life and your journey? Because I know you've written, you've written a, a screenplay, yeah. right? Uh, so I'm still you're a writer. I know where right. I read that. Yeah. I'm still I'm still <laughs> living the writing as opposed to writing you yeah, know what I mean? yeah, I'd rather, still living the I'd, ride. I'd rather live it than write it. <laughs> you are living it. And I love that you're living it because it it's just so incredible. And I wondered, um I had this thought like earlier in the day and I'm like, I wonder if he ever realized how famous the very first movie of that Pirates of the Caribbean would be. Ooh, and, yeah. and how much people would so fall in love with you as a comical character um, in the movie because you you and uh, Mackenzie were uh, funniest two guys like yeah. through the whole film and then they of course brought you on again for two other films and I was wondering did you ever think that when you made the first movie that pirates would still be that um, you know loved and it would just be such a success no no, I mean, you couldn't, you couldn't, this, it's the phenomenon of that. It's, it's up there with one of the great franchises of all time. So to have any kind of piece of that, I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say it's like that Star Wars. It's up there with, you know, to a lot of people, it's their Star Wars. It's their Indian yeah. to mm -hmm. a lot. Of so even to get mentioned with the great movies, uh, Johnny, of course, you know, and there's so many reasons, but number one is Johnny and the director. There is no number one, but I guess you could, if you have to pick one, you'd pick Johnny and I'd be cool with that. Uh, but let me tell you this, the director, Jerry Bruckheimer and all the other people involved, like Gore Verbinski was our director and Jerry Bruckheimer, the great producer, um, you know, getting Johnny and then having like a young Kira that no one really knew, you know, Bend It Like Beckham came out when we were doing this movie. Um, Orlando Bloom, same thing. He'd been very like, young, very young. Those those two are very young. 
Yeah. And I love that. She showed a lot of affection for you. You know, kindness. It just, uh, but that's just, (laughs) it could be just in pictures. (laughs) Well, if, even in pictures, if you know what, I mean, even so, I'll take it because yeah, that's what. Yeah. And uh, Kira's a badass. Is she really? Well, <laughs> I always fancy. wonder if they're super right. soft or, you uh, know. No, 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 no. She was she was tough as nails and gutsy and fun and yeah. And you needed that kind of girl for that film. Yeah, well, Zoe Saldana, too, in the first movie. That's amazing. That's so fun, though. I mean, just in the storyline and the fact that you guys, um, you you ended up being with Mackenzie quite a bit um, through all the oh, series. Did yeah. they we were did kind of put you guys as a brother love, or how did that, or is it just that you bounced never, off each other? So we made up that, we, that I was his uncle, just because it was weird. <laughs> we didn't have anything else. But oh. <laughs> oh, it's too funny. It's too funny. And, you know, you brought so much laughter to everybody. I wanted to let you know that I have been on the pirate ship in Florida. So I truly went on it when I was 10 years old. So I was on it before the franchise came out. <laughs> I've been on the pirate ship. Wow. Which one? The one oh. in Florida at Disney World. Oh, oh, yeah. That, the one yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That stuff. Like yeah, that. my mom's a snowbird. She has a house in Florida. So that's how we yeah. are able to, you know, to, but of well, course. Well, I went on the Pirates of the Caribbean ride when I was, I first was at Disneyland yeah. when I was four years old, six years old, mm-hmm. something like that, you know? And the, the, they, they had one in California. Is that the one yeah. you went to? Yeah. Isn't that weird? Like, who knew that one day you'd grow up and be a real pirate? <laughs> I was I was going I was already on Pirates of Caribbean before there was a Disney World. Oh wow. All hey, right. Okay. Uh, before there was one. Oh. I used to go to Disneyland was a big deal. And then as I got older, um I mean I'm grumpy too, right? I am a pirate you of the are grumpy. grumpy. You are Leroy and you're right. grumpy. Right. Which right. is really weird how you ended up in um Disney more than once. It's like they well, Disney just fell in love with you. It's what I said earlier about matching. You match the universe. You know, you're 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 looking for the match and it finds you and you just gotta be open to like asking the right question. Like yeah. if I young guy like what movies would i i mean those are great franchises like like you said i did 55 60 episodes of that once upon a time uh as grumpy and leroy but they're all the same guy it's all there you know it's all grumpy it's just that when they're cursed and sent to the modern world did you watch once upon a time um, of course i did okay right so from like the very beginning right from the very beginning all right so like um, when we're, because it was so, so well advertised and we fell right in love with it that's true it was well advertised it was abc I, that Snow White was my very first book when I was a kid, and they gave me the album. I don't know if you remember, but when we were kids, if you wanted to have a, a, a story, they came on albums with the with a book. It was one like big album with a book, and I, did, a and I had Snow White. Snow White was my book. Yeah, see, I'd never I, Snow White. Yuck! You know, when I was a, when I was a, like pirates were cool. I mean, obviously, <laughs> in your <garden. laughs> I was that's perfect for you, though. If you're going to well, be a character in Disney, you might as well be. I'm, I'm princess, you know? Like, <laughs> and I've learned, I've learned to be, like, more princess, and I love my princesses. And, you know... <laughs> But it, but it's funny that when you're when you're a six-year-old boy, you're 100% pirate. And when you're, you know, 50 or whatever, you're 100% princess. You love the princesses. <laughs> You're very funny. Hey, Lee, hang on one second. We're going to take a really quick uh, commercial break. Everybody, we'll be right back. Great. For America's wounded warriors, coming home can sometimes be a battle in itself. Making the transition back to civilian life or active duty with a traumatic injury can be the challenge of a lifetime. The USO provides every American a way to support our wounded warriors and their families through every phase of their medical treatment and rehabilitation. It's how all of us, as a community, can give something back to our heroes. It's how we can say thank you 
and assure them that their sacrifice is recognized and appreciated by every one of us. Join us. Visit USO.org to learn how you can make a difference in the lives of our wounded warriors and their families. The USO. Until everyone comes home. back to the show everybody and i'm here on the hollywood red carpet radio show talking to lee onsberg and we've been talking for the last half hour about some really cool stuff um he of course you know was in pirates of the caribbean uh, once upon a time we've been talking about all the different things that lee's done um not everything but boy oh boy we it would take me a very long time lee yeah to, you know go down through everything that you've done and experience what you experience through week I think one. we have never, and a lot of stuff never gets touched on. Like I did Columbo. Oh, I did. Yes, uh, I was going to ask you about Columbo because Columbo. I like Columbo. I grew up with it. Yeah, yeah, right. So like Col- Peter Falk, man, awesome. I love Peter, Peter Falk's hero, but he was kind of a dick. <laughs> like he kind of t- his eyebrows. <laughs> but, you know, Peter <laughs> Falk had a glass eye. The glass eye, yes, he yeah. did. All right. So, you know, a lot of his, you know, in, in acting, in acting and a lot in, in, in there's it's there's a thing called a master gesture that an actor sometimes are, can look to find for a character. Like sometimes it could be a way the guy uses his hands, the way the guy bows, the way the guy uh, he might have one thing. He takes his fist and rubs it on his chin when he thinks he does something. You know, that that says that's this character and you'll see it 
a lot of times in a movie they show it happen the first time as he's a kid and then later like Indy scared of the snakes yes okay okay all right so you kind of try and look for that when you're building the character and Peter Falk he had a he had a glass eye and so it was tough for him to see where the mark was to be in focus because when you're acting, I don't care what actor you are, think, you know, that you hear from, a movie actor always knows where the camera is. A movie actor is never 100% like in the character with no awareness of a camera. And if they are, it's going to be a lot, the, the director, and they, may ha they better have a lot of cameras set up because it's going to be hard to get capture the right stuff. Right. You have to work with the camera. You have to show it and make it available, you know. And <clears throat> so Peter Falk would he built in his master gesture. He'd be like uh, taking in information uh, and he would cover his hand and look down at the floor. You know, that movie had uh, yes. look at the floor. that was to find the mark where he's supposed to be standing for his close ups. Oh wow! Because when he you walks know, in, you when he walks, know, in, you would never know that watching it on on this was, side of the screen. I know that's the beauty of it that's to get it up <laughs> with someone like Mr. Falk and, and these legends, you know. You know, and they knew that, and they knew that they they just find that one little niche because that is that's like that person's tick um, that somebody else is going to copy. You know, it's like the when they made the man that stupid laugh ever used to do um, back in the seventies, and then it caught on, and all these Valley girls were all doing that crazy laugh. It was just niche, like catchy. I don't know. I never cared for it. I thought it was silly, but it was like that. It's just it's a thing where people just go, "I know who that is." I yeah. know who, who made that. Up. The Valley Girl thing, very stereotypical of kind of the rich. <laughs> That was girl. You see that in Germany, I'm sure the main <laughs> is some stuffy Maine is. Yeah. Yeah. Sorority girl, but Valley Girl Airhead kind of like there's a lot of them. I mean the of that genre. Um yeah. <laughs> now what are some projects that you did that a lot of people wouldn't even know that you were part of that oh. really meant a lot to you? Oh. Been a lot. Well, my well, first. You really enjoyed, or you just you know there well, was something ever was it. was called tape tape heads. Oh. Okay. With um, my buddies uh, Tim Robbins, who I went to college with, and then I started a theater company with. He worked with John Cusack on the movie called The Sure Thing, and brought John down to the theater. And then between the two of them, they helped me like get my first movie role in a movie that they were the stars of called tape heads. And so that one is a really cool, great movie. Cause that was my first movie. Wow. And they were young. You guys were all young. Yeah. I was, um, uh, uh, 24. 24. Now, I saw you in a military movie. Um, or it was military clothing. Uh, I can't remember what it was, but I was like, "What? Well, he, you could be a great soldier too." So oh, there's so I, no, I, no, I military. I was in well, Colombo was kind of paramilitary, but you didn't see that one. I did. I remember that show, Alf. Yes, of course. Alf, I still Alf, watch it. I, I still watch Alf. Yeah, Alf. <laughs> I'm in an episode of Alf. Uh, you are. I think so. Maybe it was a movie. I forget what it was, but I know I did a, a, a movie. Scene. I, I know they the, did a movie. Like what? I know like they a, did a movie for Alf. Not like a theatrical movie, but like a TV movie. Yeah. I don't even know what it have been. But well, I think what's it was, that like? Because now you're working with a puppeteer. Yeah. That was awesome. I mean, I loved Alf. I loved Alf. <laughs> I, I was going to roll that well, what is like, with a puppet. Yeah. I've worked with puppets a few times. I never got to do Sesame Street. I wish I could. You did. Oh my gosh. I can't believe that. You should have done well, Sesame Street. Famous. Like, you know, let's be honest. Like, 
uh, like I'm a good character actor and people know who I am. And, but a lot of times they don't real, realize who I am. It's not like I'm that famous that they, everyone recognizes me, you know, you, when you're real famous, people recognize you in a hoodie with sunglasses on, you know what I mean? I'm not that famous. So if you smile though, well, I'll, I'll be honest, like they you. figure it out. They definitely figure yeah. it out. Yeah. I get a lot of, I know you from somewhere. I'm, I <laughs> and then it's like if they saw you with like 10 hours worth of makeup on or I, I could go like for a lot of them I used to be able to, I can do the hello puppy I and know Are you, you know what I was going to ask you what your favorite line was in a movie or your most famous that was the most famous line I think so I mean I, think, I called Jerry I Son I you for years oh. about that you know I go, Michael Jordan was so phony as a famous line I had on, on Jerry Seinfeld. <laughs> um, and my, uh, the curse it's here from once upon a time is pretty famous. It's like really that. awesome. Isn't it funny that you, that one line is that became famous to people. They just loved it that much that it got repeated over and over and over. Well, Ellen, I know I men say, your line and I was I just look at him like it was in the trailer it was part of the trailer. <laughs> it was part of the, that was the thing it made the trailer right so it became part of like it's there's a million memes to it because of it was in the trailer right. so I'm the editor <laughs> like who cut that trailer you know <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, I do, you do. That's what I'm talking. Remember, I said team sport early on. I said team sport. Yeah. For sure, the editor is more important to the actor's career than the actor is to his own career. Because, like, a terrible editor will me make you uh, so nasty. I love the Once Upon a Time musical episode, too, by the way. That was super fun. Um, Did but you sing? Yeah, did, did? I did. How, I had a couple. How of you singing. I, I was. I never even asked uh, you that. Before. I never asked you if you sang before. I don't think. I mean, I've done a lot of performing. Yeah. Yeah. That's oh, awesome. Right. Yeah. I bet you're good. I bet I'm, you're really good. I have to watch that episode. I don't get. A, I mean, I'm not getting to. Uh, anything more than a few bars to sing in that one uh i forget i forget how many lines of music no it was fair enough that i had to go in and record the uh pre-roll pre-roll would what you get that? to play did you get to be grumpy and have to play like sing like with attitude <laughs> uh, yeah for sure yeah good because <laughs> i wouldn't want it any other way I think how um, <laughs> that's so amazing. Now, when people um, do, people think that you're a specific type of actor now, or what do you mean? Because I, I do they do they cast play you specific types of things now because you've I mean, done so many different types of characters, I mean, or are there uh, new things coming that you want to try? Uh, yeah, I'd like to try working. Like when you're not working for a while, you just want to take. You'll get it. You'll do anything. Like <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. I don't really care. I, I mean, I want to work, and it's like they're just not calling my number. And uh, but I just get on with doing other things. You know what I mean? It was great that I was a little slow. I mean, unfortunately, last year my mom passed away. But uh, sorry about that. Yeah, that was messed up, and I love my mom. I'm a huge mama's boy, and that was very tough. But at 93 and calling her own shots, I, I mean, she was kind of the boss lady to the end, and I was real thankful for that. She she kind of went out on her own terms as a, as a living a full life and everything. So, um, That's beautiful. Yeah, yeah. It was. I mean, it still hurts because she was like my rock, and a lot of times she was like the you know the only person that would be like, "Hey, what the kick me in the ass when I was like, like you know what I mean? So like, yeah, my mom is very. Were cool. you the I, baby in your family? Were you yeah, were yeah. you the youngest? The worst. I was the worst. I was the middle. Oh, you was the middle. Yeah, and middle. my mom was the middle child, yeah. and my dad was a middle child. I'm the middle child of two middle children. I'm sure there's a syndrome for it. <laughs> About it. <laughs> yeah. 
That's funny. You always wonder, the middle child, how do you treat the first child? Like, the first yeah, child. Rocket science. You know, third kid yeah. comes along, just kind of going, yeah. oh, there they are. <laughs> first, it's like, oh, look at that beautiful baby. And then the third, fourth, and it's like, there they are. <laughs> Those are the kids. I'm from the farm <laughs> have like 20 kids or whatever but but like in the big city it's like you know two or three one the numbers are worse i mean i think it might be better with seven kids you know the kids by the time like if you have seven kids then the older kids already have kids by the time the younger ones are even around you know so there's probably there's probably advantages seven kids whoa trippy um, well, and back a hundred years ago they would do that to you know because they needed them to work the farm that's what i'm saying yeah <laughs> Beautiful thing, you know what I mean. But kids Nowadays, are seven kids, and they're all on iPads and phones, and you can't even That's look at the kid and say something yeah. like, Got it. "Pick up the room." Yeah, <laughs> become the war, all of war, just just to get them to pick something up off the floor. You know, it's funny. Yeah. It's funny. It's a it's different fun. world. It's a different world. Yeah, it isn't. It isn't funny though. It isn't funny because it's just the way, you know, is we have to, we can't, we have to be curious with our kids, you know, I think like, yeah. And less telling them what to do. Um, you know, because if you, unless you want them to grow up and like be messed up, you can't control another person. You can't, you know, learn to control yourself first. You won't need to control everything in the whole world. That's <laughs> Yeah. You, know, you know, you got a really unique sense of um, parental guidance, and I like that you're very you you allow your kid to be himself. Yeah, I mean, he's going to have to own his mistakes and learn about that. But I think the sooner you do that, the better. <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, you know, yeah, and you're raising a man. You get a lot. Of, man, so. Yeah, and, and you know, we fail. We fail, men. We fail men in modern, uh, like, well, I don't know, all societies, but a lot in America, too, like, for sure, and in the West. Because there is no, like, to me, a boy doesn't become a man till his, he, you know, his ego dies. And that's in yeah. culture. That never happens with a lot yeah, of men. So like, ever, wait right? a minute. <laughs> I there's have a, brothers, look, no men. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's why they're so messed up. Yeah. And, and there's different, they stay in that baby stage. There's different, man, there's like, the ultimate progression is to the king stage. There's magician, there's war, I mean, king, warrior, and lover, I think, are the male characters and baby. And so you can have double aspects of it. So you could be a baby warrior, some guy that goes around and shoots someplace up or whatever, never grows but, up. Has, yeah. But that, that, think about it, though. Like in the old, I think that's the men, great. Men, the men would get sent to war or through some sort of training that would separate them from their ego, would scare them to their, and they would, they would either make it or they wouldn't. And, you know, that's not what we do now, but then we have to like, so there is no mandatory, I would say mandatory service for everyone would help this country. You know, I would have... I would, I would say every American gets paid every month at least 2000 bucks. Every American. But every American has to serve, too. Okay? And that yeah. service would include like a senior army, like I call it the gray army that helps the older people. I'd have a green army that goes and helps the with the um, environment. I'd have a... Um, I'd have some people go through to the military, of course, the ones that qualify. You know, I'd have all these things. And, like, so everyone is invested. And then, like, like, like Yang and Bernie or whatever, I'd give everyone two grand a month. This country is loaded. We're spending and we're wasting it. And the people are struggling. It's like so lame. <laughs> so lame. No, you're right. You're, you're, you're right about that. And it's funny that, well, it's not really funny. It's kind of it's kind of sad that we have to raft. Experience, yeah, we have to experience this at this time of our lives when things should be in a better direction for for uh, for advanced as we are scientifically, right. mentally, physically, you know, educationally, and as and computer, right. we should be further ahead. You're right. 
politics is like uh, over science. I'm sorry if 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 I injure my penis, I'm going to go to the doctor. I'm not going to go to the my political my congressman about something <laughs> like my. Come on, people! Like really, there's a reason they went. They're doctors. You hear all these cons- crazy conspiracy theories, and so people like know something that the doctor doesn't know. I'm smarter than that smart kid in class. No, you're not. Science is fact. It's proven. They test the theory. Listen, with the vaccine, take it, don't take it. I'm fully vaxxed. I'm ready to travel. The bottom yeah. line, like, I don't have forks sticking to my head. I like being microchip. Follow me. I'm not doing anything wrong. What the fuck? I, and you know what? Like, for all the people that died for politics... So other people could get rich, forget about it. You know, I don't know about, you know, like the pandemics and the flu. I mean, read the history. It was almost the same thing. I was thinking, yeah, I was thinking that too. Every so many years, we have a major issue. I mean, look, the, the fact is, once you started vaccinating people, the, yeah. the sh- way. And the places, yeah, that, that, yeah. places that don't get vaccinated are going to see more people get it. And that sucks because no matter what, it's a bad bug. Yeah. A bad bug. It was, it, well, you grew, you grew up in California and it was, it was pretty bad in, well, in every place. But because it's such a vast population, you know, I always worried about the big populations. I'm, I'm pretty rural. So I don't really integrate a lot with lot of people, but you know what I'm saying? Like in an area where you go to the grocery store and you're next to hundreds of people, right? You know, but that's it, a whole other ball game. You know, really hit rural America through their the way where they would congregate the church and stuff. Those places. I mean, anywhere people congregated, especially where, where it got cold. Mm. Yeah. And I had to stay healthy because my mom was dying. And she was. Yeah. There. And I was there yeah. a day or every every other day. Okay. Yeah. For, for three because months, you, for three yeah. months, that thing, including hospital, following these yeah. real strict protocols. And so mm-hmm. I'm like, I was like, you stay the, you know, F away from me right now because I am under full, like, hazmat in my mind. So I could just go make sure I was there for my mom and provide her whatever she needed as she transitioned out of the, out of this life. Like, you know, I was, in t- I was so grateful that so many people had no one that got the COVID and died alone. You heard of people like nurses holding their hands and shit. So yeah. anyway. I'm mean, like, I get, I'm I'm a lucky dude. I'm lucky the way things worked out. I'm I'm sorry my mom is gone at 93. No mom should ever die. Moms are the coolest. But you know, we're all no one's getting out of here alive. No one. <laughs> that was a guarantee on 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 being born. You're, you're yeah, gonna, yeah, 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 yeah. You just don't know what you got until you've got it, and then take what you can get. Absolutely. I had to, to learn young myself. Um, Every day, too. Also, I think, you know. I lost my father when I was a child, so I, I, I just contribute it to, like, love every day of your life, and even if it sucks. Holy. How old? And I was I was just two, so I didn't really know him or remember him. What? And I, yeah, and I just, I just found a photograph of him recently. After all these years, I found a photograph of him, and... He looked like my son, and I was just like, all my life, I just said, I just want to see what he looks like, and I've been looking at his face my whole life, because I had my son, he looks just like him, so I was like, thank you, God. I mean, that was really cool. I don't know how that worked out, you know. That's a good it's, one right there. It's weird things, you know, it's like, you just, there's things happen for a reason, I do believe, I think everything's the way it is for a reason, to be Telling- honest. Stuff that you, the pe- that's why people say miracles happen, right? Because in the universe, 
anything is possible. It's all available to you. You just have to like ask for the right thing at the right moment. It's the timing of it. You know, it's the way the moment I, that's, that's how you manifest good shit. It's out there. Get it. You know, you didn't see it. You can draw it right on in because you have the mark. You just have to, you ever play go fish? Yes. <laughs> that's, that's, yeah. that's life. Go fish. <sighs> Yeah. Like that, like that would be a joke. If I was a stand up comic, I would write a joke about this because it'd be like, yeah, uh, <laughs> the kid, the guy is like so caught up asking for like the new Ford truck. And he realizes, God, I want a Ford F one fifty, whatever, blah, blah, blah. God's like, nah. And then he's like, fuck <laughs> you. God, forsake why have you forsaken me right you didn't give me my ford because i'm a ram dealer i'm a dodge <laughs> dealer <laughs> you're getting a jeep <laughs> exactly <laughs> i don't know the jeep people yeah. are making set these days because they're driving crazy all of a sudden it's and everybody yeah. run into the right. jeep i don't know what it is i'm driving <laughs> the ram <laughs> i will ram hot. them around <laughs> yeah uh, around where I am now, which is I'm I'm like outside of LA. I live in Ventura County, which is rad. I live in a farmers where a lot of farmers are. It's a rural county, um, and uh, so we're only have the, we, uh, the population up here is less than a million people, right? So, because oh. it's real mountainous and a lot of like there was some there's some where my town was an oil town, but there's a lot of big trucks around here. A lot of big, when I go to the baseball games, a lot of big trucks, guys driving big trucks. Oh, yeah. Con yeah. Con I like country, big boys. Trucks. country boys. I can yeah, see you, I I can see you driving that. a truck. Love. Mine's a middle truck. I'm 2,500. I'm too scared to get into the 3,500. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, if you uh, any kind of work truck, because I would have, a, I would have to have at least like a two fifty if I'm working with my brother in law to get some weight in the back, you know. Um, yeah. <laughs> but I actually like my favorite though is one they don't even sell here in, in the uh, in the USA, but you can get it maybe in Mexico. It's a Ford like little Ranger Raptor. Ah, oh, so cool, like a little yeah. desert. Ah. Oh, driver oh yeah full on but everything for me, yeah dude it's like off-road uh i mean it's like it would be like a baja racer full oh, on. Wow. Full wow good travel but the smaller you still get the full uh i mean it's obviously a shorter bed it's the ranger model it's like the smaller okay. but with the yep. burly engine and the better suspension and the way better you know uh front end shit too right so built to hit, built to grind they don't sell it here my buddy has when he lives down in baja i'm going to mexico tomorrow you are yeah just for um because we're surfers we're gonna go for a quickie I didn't know that we're surfer that's awesome so my son just turned or graduated like i said middle school yeah uh, and so just we, we surprised him with like a quickie because we haven't gone anywhere since the pandemic, but we're all fully faxed. And even he got his second shot now. So we can just zip down there and not worry about it for two days, grab some tacos. That's waves. That's that, well, now, where do you like to go? Is it is it a uh, like a popular location or is it more like just a little nook in the side people don't know we're, about? Yeah, but, you know, we're actually for this one because we don't have a lot of time he made the all-stars in little league uh my son and so i got to skip a couple practices but they're the the all-star season starts in a couple in a like 10 days like the tournament to go to williamsport or whatever for the national championship for him for juniors so amazing. That's amazing. their team's okay but like I'm not saying he's going to win even district or anything like that. He just to go out there and have some fun and not be on Xbox as much like you were saying, you know, and he likes baseball and being outside. So, um, but my wife wanted to go to Mexico. So I was like, 
cool. That's a great present, but we can't ditch too many practices. So we're just going, we're going to go there tomorrow, two nights and come back Saturday to be back for like 8 a.m. practice on Sunday. That's what I'm saying. I'm not working as a, at right now, but I love being around for my kid and going to practice. Yeah. Silver line. Always, always take advantage of that. Always take advantage of life because it's going to pass by. And oh my just God. like this, this show passed by super fast. And oh I'm bummed out that it's almost over. But Lee, what is something that you can tell somebody that we don't know? Um, things that maybe you're going to be doing? Well, like I said, I don't. I wish I knew what I was going to be doing. I'm not going to be doing much like acting wise. Right. That's fine. No, but I don't know. You know, I'm going to be, but I will tell you this. I'm going to be living in gratitude. I'm ready. I'm hungry. I'm good at what I do. I'm growing my hair out, getting my Jufro going, uh, my bald head. I haven't had hair in so long. So I always shaved my head. I'm just like, I'm going to like, yeah. I don't care. 70s, 80s, just be a weird freak for a little bit <laughs> and, and try and land a part like that, you know? Awesome. Um, where can where can everybody get in touch with you if they want to hire you for some more work? Um, well, just find me on social media. I'm all over the for now. Right. Social media is kind of like I don't know. There's just it's so much wreckage with this. I wish there was a better social media right now. Yeah. Or everyone was just cool and about all about. Yeah. Uh, the show and they that's... contact me, I will definitely make sure that you get the message. Yeah. Yeah. At Lee Ehrenberg. Twitter or Instagram. I mean, I'm just my name on all the platforms. So. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. Um, thank we're you. Everybody, yeah. thank you so much, and we will see you next week.